Good morning or good afternoon, depending upon where you're at. This is Ray Olson with the Olson Group, and I apologize. We had one a technical delay here, but we also are having people just jumping on here like crazy. And I think that they're not jumping on to listen to me. It's our guest. And I appreciate everyone waiting, so we're just going to get the show on the road here. And... Uh, and it'll give us a little time as I'm introducing Jack. Uh, we'll probably have a lot more people on. But again, this is Ray Olson. I'm the uh, CEO, founder of the Olson Group. We're an insurance marketing organization specializing in annuities, life insurance, retirement income planning, and long-term care alternatives. And again, we want to welcome all of you in our series of business building webinars. And I'm not going to take too much time today, but I do want to take a second to introduce our speaker today, the one that will be guiding us in this very interesting webinar. And I'm assuming that the vast majority of you, if you've ever done anything in the annuity business or especially the index annuity business, you know Jack Marion. But if you read Business Week, Kiplinger, Smart Money, Chicago Tribune, Christian Science Monitor, USA Today, Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, I can go on and on. You've seen Jack either quoted or interviewed uh, um, in the financial world, on the financial world. Uh, Jack's also the author of several books on financial topics and a regular contributor to many periodicals. His comments and analysis have appeared in over 100 publications. He's a frequent speaker at industry conferences and a frequent guest on financial talk slash radio programs across the country. Well, Jack isn't any stranger to our business. Mr. Marion was president of an investment broker slash dealer with offices in nine states and formerly vice president of a life insurance company and vice president of a New York Stock Exchange investment banking firm. Today, he provides research and consulting services to select companies. He has an MBA from the University of Missouri, and soon we'll then be calling him Dr. Marion. He's a longtime friend and business associate. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you our host, Jack Marion. Jack, good afternoon. Good morning. How are you? I'm pretty good, Ray. And no, you can call me Jack, honest. Okay. <laughs> well, Jack, we get just get started here. Let's get this show started because uh, I saw the PowerPoint in advance, and this is unique. It's different and very timely. So, Jack, take it away. All right. What we're trying to do is look at where the annuity industry is today. And that part's easy because that's all written down. And the other part is making some predictions about where it might go in the next year, year and a half. With that in mind, uh, the Wall Street Journal every year looks at all the economic forecasts and does an accuracy review. And they found that over time, over 80% of all predictions are wrong. So please keep that in mind as I start talking. But we can't talk about where we've been. This slide shows index annuity sales for the first six months of the year, the first and second quarter. Index annuity sales and other annuity sales have held up very well. Down a little bit from a couple of years ago for fixed rate and variable. Uh, index annuity sales for the first six months were essentially where they were for the first half of 2010 and 2009. So from that perspective, annuities have been pretty much status quo. What isn't status quo are a couple other factors. Uh, one is in the regulatory world. Now, 151A was defeated. A lot of folks kind of felt that we'd won the war, let's go home and bask in glory. But unfortunately, that was just round one. It's going to be an ongoing battle for survival of the independent agent distribution market because there are folks out there that just frankly don't like it. Uh, the states were getting active a couple years ago and passing or trying to pass some really unique laws. Uh, an Arkansas state rep introduced a bill that would ban index annuity sales. The Connecticut legislature introduced a bill that would have banned all annuity sales. California introduced a bill that said the commission had to be disclosed to the consumer, but not only that, that the agent had to accurately predict the future return of the annuity for the life of the annuity. Now, those three failed, but there's a couple that did pass. Florida passed last year the Safeguard Our Seniors Act, and the last minute Hail Mary on the last day of the legislature. 
And Texas passed a very strong uh, version of the 1010 rule. The key point on these two that pass is the main reason they passed is agents and insurance carriers didn't say a word in opposition. Didn't say a word at all. The only people that showed up at the Texas meeting was ARP. And they said it was just wonderful if you restricted annuities. So I guess the first part of this is please keep active and informed about what's happening in your states. If you think there's a problem or if there's a strange bill being introduced, uh, let NAFA know, the National Association for Fixed Annuities. They have an active campaign to go to these states and try to correct and educate them. So keep informed, be active. Regulators have not gone away. The current issue for agents, the biggest issue for agents from the SEC standpoint, is asking whether agents should be fiduciaries or not. It doesn't really make sense for an agent because an agent by definition is a special relationship. If you're an agent of the insurance carrier, there's not a reason to be a fiduciary unless you take on fiduciary obligations. So that hopefully will be defeated, but it's up in the air. Now when 151A went away, NESD 0550 should have gone away, which was the reg that FINRA passed saying you should treat all index annuities as securities. Well, 151A said they aren't. That should have killed the bill, but FINRA never killed it, and they're still prosecuting under it. But just last summer, a broker-dealer was fined $50,000 because it uh, didn't keep copies of index annuity advertising materials done by an agent that was with them for mutual funds and not for index annuities. Interesting spelling of because there. And the other problem you have are the state securities departments have not gone away. There's a source of funds issue in many states where they're looking at people that are not registered investment advisors and saying you need to be one if you're going to give investment advice. But that is on the other way in some states like Alabama, Illinois, and Missouri, especially Missouri, where they're saying that if you are an RIA and you are registered, but most of your advice is to purchase an index annuity, you essentially are operating as an RIA under false pretenses and they will prosecute you. And they have been going after, the state of Missouri has been going after agents that have an RIA suggesting people get out of their securities and buy index annuities because they say they essentially are using the investment advisor as a subterfuge to sell more index annuities. You need to be aware of what's happening in the states because the state securities departments in some states are very nasty and very negative about index annuities. On a good side, good note, Iowa passed S14 last summer, which kind of establishes a roadmap or ground rules for what you can and can't say. It's common sense. It says if you talk about the stock market or investments or the economy, the same type of stuff you talk about over coffee at the diner, that's not investment advice. If you tell a consumer to sell a stock or buy a stock or advise them on their portfolio, that is investment advice and you need to be registered. Now, S14, the Iowa Bulletin, is only effective in Iowa, but hopefully it will spread to other states because it makes sense and enables you to do your job as an annuity agent. So that's what's happening in the regulatory world. What's been happening overall to the market of fixed annuities? You're seeing more selling groups. Uh, the rebirth of that would probably be the Annexus group, but you're seeing several more carriers develop selling groups of limited uh, marketing organizations and agents. What that does for the carrier is it cuts distribution costs. It lowers their cost of getting the annuity on the books. You've also been seeing rates and caps going down, commissions and overrides going down, GLWB roll-up rates are going down, and what I'm seeing is new products that were supposed to come out aren't coming out. So that is what has been happening. And so far I'm on pretty good ground because this is reality. Now I get into the crystal ball world. We start with where interest rates are. This is a 50-year, excuse me, 60-year look at interest rates at bond yields, going back to 1953. And you can see that interest rates have been trending down for 30 years, but they've really taken a dip in the last 90 days to 150 days. Interest rates today are where they were back in 1959. And that is the reason you're seeing 
all these cuts in rates and comp and GOWB features. What should continue to happen is rates will continue to go down a little, but not 10-year Treasury rates. And that does not mean the 10-year Treasury rates are going to go up. It just means that I feel the market overreacted to them. Uh, there's no reason that 10-year Treasury rates should have dropped to 1.72% 20 days ago. And when I created the slide 20 days ago, that's what I said, because the spread between corporates and treasuries was just too big. It didn't make sense. Since then, Treasury rates have moved up by a half point. They're back at 2.2. I see the 10-year Treasury heading back up to 2.5, 2.6. But that does not mean that rates are going up. It simply means that the 10-year Treasury is adjusting to where it should be. So for the next 14 months, we're going to have lower overall rates, which is still going to affect commissions and overrides. They're still going to be coming down. Caps are going to remain difficult. Insurers are going to take on a little more risk by going more to triple B bonds as opposed to triple A bonds. And if this looks like it's going to continue, you could see some index annuities developed that use methods that are able to provide slightly higher caps. So there are ways to do this to recook an index annuity that will still allow you to offer caps of 7, 8, 9, 10 percent just not using the traditional indices that we're seeing today. I don't think we're going to have a double dip recession, mainly because it's hard to fall much further than we've fallen. Corporations are sitting on a lot of cash. They haven't hired back. They have low inventories. People aren't spending. It's hard to go down from where we are. So no recession, no, no second recession, if one of these major things does not happen. Unless something else falls off the cliff, we should avoid another recession recovery should slowly pick up steam. Long term, it depends upon 536 people. Uh, we have an endemic problem as opposed to a systemic one. And by that I mean the financial system is not at fault here. The financial system is working. The problem is an entity, and it's all in Washington. It's Congress and the President. They've got to get their act together and speak with some type of common voice. They do have to cut taxes, excuse me, they do have to raise taxes and cut spending, but they can't have either of those go into effect during a weak recession. There has to be something in play that says these do not go into effect until we've had a strong recovery of X percent for so many quarters. But something does have to happen. If it doesn't happen, and this just continues, we continue with the stalemate, there's some really nasty possibilities. Uh, one is essentially we redo the currency, like it happened in the 70s. In fact, we went off the gold standard, which results in more inflation. In the short term, that's good for us. In the long term, that's not good for us. And by that, I mean the annuity market. Another possibility is we have Japan syndrome, where interest rates essentially keep dipping and dipping and dipping. It's going to now produce a very rough market for the annuity world. What I believe will happen because most politicians really don't want to commit suicide, is they will resolve the major problems. We will get back on track. We should be back to 0406 level in bond yields by late 2013, which means caps and commissions and everything else should start heading up in 2013. But for the next 14, 15 months, it's going to be tough times. Where's the pony under all this? Comparably, annuities still look very good. And one of the key points I find interesting is if a retiree was getting $1,000 a month in interest from their CDs five years ago, they're now getting $100 a month from those same CDs. Their income has been cut by 90%, which is just incredible. Even in this environment of lower caps and lower fixed rates, annuities are still paying four, six, ten times more, and we've had the potential to pay up to ten times more than CD rates. So people in banks are looking for alternatives. Annuities still give them an alternative that can do much better than the bank. They're not going to get back up to $1,000 a month, but they might get back up to three or four or $500 a month, which beats the heck out of 100 The other strong story here is the income for life story, the guaranteed lifetime withdrawal benefit story. With all this market uncertainty, that is such a strong benefit. 
And unlike a variable annuity GLWB, and I, I nothing against variable annuities, the GLWB on an index annuity protects the principal from market risk. The key difference between the two is even though they both provide income, if you buy a variable annuity with the GLWB and the subaccounts drop by 50% in three months and you sell that, you're going to get back 50% less, less a surrender charge. If the index drops by 50% in three months, you could cash in for 100% of what you put in, less a surrender charge. So big difference in this environment. And the final point on this is the annuity industry is not going to disappear. We're going to make it through these times. We've made it through other times. There have been more difficult times. And we're still going to be around. Index annuities are going to be around. Fixed annuities are going to be around. Carriers can still be profitable in this type of market. Now, there are some things that you can do to get through the next 14 months. The first is contact existing clients if they have a flexible annuity with a nice minimum, higher minimum. There are a lot of products out there that allow you to add more, uh, more premium to a flexible annuity, and they still have minimum guarantees of 2 or 3%. That's very attractive in a 0.37% CD world. The second is contact everyone that owns an annuity, period, just to remind them of how well their annuity is doing compared to the bank and compared to everything else. Again, 3% cap doesn't look really great historically, but it sure beats the heck out of a 20% bear market loss. Third thing, talk about today's guaranteed lifetime withdrawal rates. I know we've seen the roll-up rates cut. We've seen some payout factors cut. However, if this interest rate market continues, we could see those cut even further. Now, that may not happen. But I'm goosey enough that it wouldn't hurt to talk to people about what's available today because it might not be available tomorrow. And the fourth thing here is talk about whole life insurance. Talk about index life insurance. These are still viable vehicles in a low interest rate environment. People need safety. People need protection. And the biggest thing of all is keep selling. You have a wonderful story. The annuity story is guarantees and protections. Oh, Lord, what a wonderful story for these uncertain times. So that's my wrap-up and analysis of where we are and where we're going, Ray. Well, Jack, I appreciate it. And, you know, I was just reading today, you know, for any of one that doesn't receive Jack's index compendium, uh, you might want to consider subscribing or buy his most recent books. You know, Jack does more than just talk about charts and history, where we are and where we're going, even though he's very good at that. Jack has a great mind, but Jack also understands that sometimes understanding human nature is much more important than uh, understanding the product. I'm reading in your uh, this issue of October 2011 where you have the article motivated to buy annuities. If I just could pull something out of here, and I'm just jumping right in the middle of an article. It says, for example, seminar attendees could be asked to complete a short survey before the presentation begins, asking them whether they agreed that, quote, it is important to protect at least some assets from the risk of stock market loss, end quote. And another one, quote, my retirement assets are protected from the effects of a long, prolonged bear market. I think it's getting people to understand, to face the music, to have adult talk, big boy, big girl talk, which seems like we're unable to get out of Washington to, to everyone in, in America. These are unique times. And Jack and I were talking the other day, and this shows our age. Back in the 70s, Ann and I moved to Baltimore for a while. And uh, this will shock people. Tuesday and Thursdays, those were our gas days. Those were the days that we could gas up the car. And I was very excited that uh, I was getting at one time 8% uh, on my CD, except my mortgage was 12. And we had, C we had money markets paying 18 at one point and inflation in excess of that. Uh, just cataloging on what Jack was saying, you know, the things that we could do one contact in our annuity clients. First of all, it's the thing that we promised them that we would do, stay in touch. And there's this nervousness out there. Contact annuity clients and let them know compared to what. 
and our GLWB rates, I mean, my God, we are putting together personal pension plans for people, additional defined benefit programs, guaranteed streams of income that they can't outlive. And whole life insurance, well, Jack, thanks for the plug. I mean, my God, life insurance, especially our single premium, has been growing by leaps and bounds, especially when it's of a hybrid nature that has chronic illness and long-term care accelerated benefits and keeps selling. Ugh. Jack, we've talked about this, that there is an economic paralysis going on in America. I watch Fox just like everybody else does. I read the newspapers. I read the magazines. But every day you've got to put on your annuity pants, your annuity skirts and outfits and get out there and sing the praises because we still have the best deal in town. And before I ask Jack a couple questions again, uh, in this past issue of one of the trade magazines out there, uh, one of the industry greats, Marv Feldman, uh, and Marvin Feldman is, an, I mean, he's an icon, but his dad was arguably uh, maybe the best life insurance salesman ever, Ben Feldman. And they're talking about where the life insurance industry is today. And he's talking about that. And you could include the annuities as well. And it says when people ask me, what about the state of the industry? He says, and I quote, uh, my reply is that I'm fine. And then he explains that fine, F-I-N-E, means frightened, insecure, neurotic, and exhausted. And, you know, that does elicit laughs from the crowd. But he goes on to say that there were one million fewer life insurance policies sold in 2010 than in 2004. And only, and there are 95 million Americans that don't have a life insurance policy. And of the ones that do, only four in 10 own individual policies. And going through with these surveys done by LIMRA, whether it's life insurance, whether it's annuities, whether it's retirement income planning, most of the people contacted say, you know, they would like to talk with somebody. Folks, there aren't many agents out there. And one of the big problems the industry has, if the average age, according to Limera, the life insurance agent is 58, and the average age of the FPA member is 56, and if we're losing 10% of the agents per year because there are so few career companies, Many people predict that the independent channel, the distribution system on the phone today, could go the way of the dodo bird. Well, I think that will turn one way or the other because people want these products. But right now, there is such a tremendous opportunity for all of us out there. Uh, Jack, if I can just throw a couple questions at you and how this market is so dynamic, the financial markets today. Uh, I see, and I, and I know you touched on this in the presentation this morning, I see now that the 10-year prior to the start of this is now at 2.21. When it got down to 1.7, 1.8, the company started deep-sixing rates, changing comp, caps, payouts, the whole thing. You think there'll be any quick turnabout here in the short run with the 10-year um, almost at two and a quarter? There was overreaction, definitely. Uh, with, you know, without a doubt, the companies have dramatically dropped their caps down to two quickly, uh, one percent fixed rate. Yeah, you're going to see some adjustment up because that was too extreme. The reality is we are in a lower interest rate environment, so this is not a trend towards higher caps. This is just recapturing some hysteria, mm -hmm. recovering from some hysteria. So, if I can ask you another question, many people talk about the volatility index, the fear index, the VIX. And we know that that, of course, plays a big role in the cost of options yes. and the pricing and, and, and what's given to our clients. But some people, I think, believe that the VIX, the volatility index, is only bad when it's dropping like a rock. Can you touch on the VIX, the volatility index, what it really means, in short, and how it affects the pricing of options? Yeah, the fear index is, is just the VX. The fear index has is, is, uh, gotten too much play in the press, really. I mean, it's the volatility of the S&P 500 future options. When it's high, it means essentially there's a lot of volatility. When there's more volatility and uncertainty, that means higher option prices. You get a higher option price, you can't buy as much of it, caps come down. Now, one thing I didn't say in this is, yeah, the price of call options is going to come down. Because right now you're looking at a VIX close to 50, Long-term historic is closer to 18, and in the mid-2000 aughts, we were around 8. Uh, so yes, option prices are going to come down, 
the problem is you've got interest rates coming down faster. So it's going to reduce the pressure, but it's still going to be ugly. Yep. Well, you know, as ugly as it might be, and you were stating this earlier, and I want to keep going back to our audience and say, compared to what? There have been very tough times from 1987, from the tech bust. We wondered, you know, wh what's going to be tomorrow? What will tomorrow bring? Well, we still have the most unbelievable products in the world where you might have been booed at a cocktail party in the past. Now you sell great guarantees and income streams. And, you know, I'm a boomer. Jack, you're a boomer. Our compatriots out there today are concerned about that income flow. They're not that concerned about any 10-year average return that any vehicle would give them because it all depends when they need the money. And it's getting in front of people. But you know you need a presentation. You need the fact finders. You need something that can help your client identify their needs, talk about the risk tolerance, and find out if they have the appropriate amount of money at risk. And annuities today, my gosh, it's tremendous. They're tremendous. They're going to continue to sell well. And I think we're going to have a bigger spurt of annuity business in the next 12 months than most people uh, would imagine. Jack, before I wrap this up and talk about our upcoming shows with our other guests, are there any other final comments that you'd like to make? Exude confidence even if you don't feel it, because that's what people are looking for. The consumers on safemoneyplaces.com, the questions I get, these people are saying, who can I talk to? I am uncertain. Where can I go? Nobody knows what the future is going to bring. But if you can act as if you know, that goes a long way. And one thing that you can offer that the Wall Street person can't is some certainty. You can say, well, at worst, I can make sure that you never make more than 1% or 2%, which sounds ludicrous from five years ago, but that's three times what the average one-year CD rate is right now. Oh, yeah, so project certainty. Okay. Well, and 3% uh, versus 1% compared to what is exactly right. And you're right. The questions at safemoneyplaces.com should all be a wake-up for be a wake-up call for all of us when you read the questions that America has. Well, Jack, again, I want to thank you for your time today, and I'm sure this was of interest to all of our listeners and viewers. As I said at the beginning, this is part of our business, building webinar, webinar series. Coming up in the beginning of November, we have probably the premier funeral trust guru in America, Mike O'Dell, and that will be early in November. Then we're going to have by probably America's number one elder law and Medicaid planning specialist, Dale Krauss. We're going to have Paul Miller from the Underhill Law Firm, the supervising paralegal, heading up the Veterans Aid and Attendance Benefit Marketplace will be on. And then our own Nick Olson will be showing a lot of magic in the wealth transfer market and how to get a big piece of that business. So again, for all of our listeners and viewers joining us today, I thank you for investing your time. For all of you that are writing with the Olson Group, thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts here at the office because without you, well, we'd be doing something else today. And for those not doing business with the Olson Group, Give us a call and find out why agents from coast to coast continue to refer to us as a different experience. And for all of us here at the Olson Group, again, thank you. Have a great day. And until next time, good selling.